another uncut interview. This time, however, I might whack your window up. I am with James, Mr. JWW, and we are currently in a McLaren 570S Spider driving out of Barcelona. Now, we can't give you any driving impressions about this car just yet due to an embargo, but I thought whilst I'm in the car with James for a while, why not do one of these new uh, uncut interviews? So welcome. Thanks. Basically, to explain the format of this, it'll be 10 to 15 minutes of us just chatting. Because you used to watch the Dead Mouse uh, copy run videos, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. So same thing. It's literally okay. us okay. just driving sure. to a location, yeah. and we're just going to have a chat and bring uh, bring Sounds the subscribers good, along. So uh, is this your first one? No, I've done I've oh. done a couple before. I thought I was breaking ground. Man. No, I thought I was no, part no. Of Archie special. was the first. Archie what? was the first. Yeah, in England. Yeah, in the okay. Alpha Junior I see how it is. So, so, yeah, okay. Cool. Um, but yeah, welcome. To Barcelona, have you ever been here before? Yeah, I came here, uh, Gumball, was it 2014 uh, yeah. I think? 2014 you were saying, yeah, when you were the in the GT3 RS, right? Exactly, I was in a 997 uh, GT3 RS, Yeah. and uh, I think that year was Miami to Ibiza. Yeah, so uh, how many have you done? How many Gumballs? Uh, so six. Wow. Yeah, six rallies. I didn't do... Yep. I'm allowed to give driving impressions, but Carry on. I'm sure you can tell by my face that Things are positive. Yes, indeed. <laughs> also, um, yeah, we've just had a little light come up. What's, this, what's the light say? I can't see. That, that light says tire pressure warning. Tire pressure warning. It'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, do so, carry on. Yeah, so Barcelona. Um, I've been a few times, but my most memorable time was uh, arriving here on uh, Gumball in 2014. The crowds were insane. Yeah, the crowds were um, some of my fondest memories and pictures from uh, Gumball are arriving in Barcelona. Didn't oh, really? realize wow. that, dude, the petrol head community yeah. here is unbelievable. Yeah, well, the amount of followers, the mess I don't know about you, but mm -hmm. the amount of messages we've been getting yeah, it's, it's has been crazy, crazy. crazy. Yeah. When we've turned up for the McLaren event, there was some people waiting outside, outside the for us, having a chat, so that's been Which really, really, really cool. Which is the most an insane and humbling experience. Ridiculous to get like on a that. plane, land a completely different part of the world, and people are there to talk to you about yeah. cars. Yeah. It's incredible. It's, it's amazing. It's and so that's cool. one of the things I wanted to touch on with you, yeah. is YouTube, because you're, mm -hmm. you're you're not that new anymore, but you're one of the newest in, yeah, in our little sure. group of the yeah. of the YouTubers. Yeah, yeah. Um, I wanted to ask you, one, what made you start doing videos? Because I remember we chatted about it a lot as uh, you were considering starting. Um, yeah, I think, yeah. Um, I mean, I've been involved in, in cars, you know, I would say all my life, really. Yeah. So my, my dad raced Formula Ford. Okay. Uh, my Didn't uncle still is a, uh, he restores classic Aston Martins. Oh, wow. And my granddad sold classic cars. So yeah. he's kind of always been in Your the life. family. Yeah. So I think cars, I was going to end up in cars at some point. Yeah. Uh, but my sort of uh, work life up until this point hasn't been anything to do with cars at all. In fact, yeah. it's been more of a sort of fashion and textiles background. Yeah, which um, we spoke about. We did a Q&A on your we channel. We did, yeah. So I, I get lots of people asking me how it all came about. Yeah. Um, now, I mean, it was, a, it was actually a coincidence that my family was also in what was known as the rag trade. So if you're okay. in the sort of fashion and textiles business, it's the rag trade. Rag trade, okay. Um, but I, I didn't sort of become part of the family business. Yeah. I ended up um, inadvertently, as a result of doing some work experience uh, for my dad, yeah. I, uh, I, I I developed and patented a fabric uh, yes. that allows you to get a suntan through it. Through it, which is yeah. insane. Which Genius. is crazy, yeah. Um, and that actually at first didn't go into fashion. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so that fabric at first went into the um, the application of treating burns with ultraviolet light. Which so, is such a smart way of crazy. using it as well. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So, we, for those of you who don't know, one of the problems of uh, treating burn wounds is actually dressing and undressing them. Like yeah. when you're peeling it off, it's just bad for the like healing process. Yeah. But there was a medical university in America that was doing um, sort of uh, tests yeah. treating burns with ultraviolet light and they yeah. needed a gauze that would allow ultraviolet light to go through it without having to undress it so yeah. often. And the product that I was working on, which was originally supposed to go into swimwear, tunnel. Carry on. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. It was originally supposed to go in 
to swimwear first of all ended up going into that world yeah um, and then off the back of my uh, family being involved in the sort of uh, fashion and uh, textiles world I then put it into swimwear and because they were in that world you probably already knew kind of how it worked exactly. how to yeah, launch yeah. a business and all that stuff yeah that's right yeah, yeah. but it was never a sort of passion yeah. like as much as it it, 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 it earned well I was never it like, was yeah, swimwear. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, it was yeah, a, yeah. It was, like, it I can yeah. It was a product that did well, yeah. um, but my passion has always been cars. Yeah. And it wasn't until I got the patent on that fabric and was able to license it into different sort of industries yeah. that I was able to afford the cars that I always dreamt of. Um, and that happened quite quickly, because you moved did. quite quickly from an RA V8 yeah, yeah. up to right. then having a speciality. Yeah, yeah, it did. It been, been, yeah. Quick, I mean, yeah. literally within two years of that, product going to market, I was yeah. able to afford cars which I would never in my wildest dreams have yeah. expected. Um, and then I actually started writing a blog first. So before I picked up a camera, I wrote yeah. a blog for about 12 months and it was doing really well. Um, but there was only so much that I felt I could get through in the written word. Yeah. There's yeah, only yeah. so much you can describe an exhaust sound. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, through actually, through the ink encouragement of Shmi, yeah. um, because I'm not sure if you guys followed my my blog or, or my very early which, channel, which or even was your fantastic. channel, yeah, your yeah, channel yeah. then, yeah. we went to pick up Tim's 675LT, yeah. um, and I joined, and it was that day that Tim was like, you might as well just start, because yeah. you're involved in it, and you, and know, you had the whatever. F12, had the F12, so I, I got an interesting car to film with, um, but I very very quickly learned that you can only rely so much on you, your own car. Yeah. You know? Oh yeah. There's yeah, only yeah. so oh, much exactly. content you can get out of one car. Um, and so I, yeah, I essentially went from writing a blog to picking up a, a camera and filming it. And Never that was expected around when the speciali was arriving. Right? Exactly. So speciali arrived basically at the beginning of my YouTube channel. Yeah. And yeah. that formed the early topics, the early basis. And your first big videos as well. First big vids. Yeah. That's it. Um, I didn't expect it to gain as much traction as it did. Turns out people really enjoyed what I was filming. Yeah. And since that day, there hasn't been a week that's gone by where I haven't uploaded some kind of content. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. And that's 18 months ago now. 18 months, 18 yeah. months ago, man. And we've so been on many, many good trips together. Many good trips. We did this I being this one, being of, one them, of them. You know, Tenerife being another. Tenerife was amazing, man. That uh, was 570 one GT launched. Yeah. I think my most fond memory of a road trip we've done together has to be Gumball. Yeah. Because we did Gumball intense. together in the Elise, which nearly killed you. <laughs> um, literally almost yeah, killed me. Literally almost yeah. killed you. And that was just an unbelievable experience. So, first of all, there's that. You're going back to a blog as well, as You're keeping on doing the videos. Um, uh, yeah, I'm so right thinking you're starting a blog. Again? Videos are going to be primary. That's yeah. still first and foremost. Um, but I'm relaunching my website, which is what originally was the, the blog. Yeah. And I yeah. want to go back to blogging because there's a lot of stuff that, like, I only make my videos 10 to 15 minutes long because yeah. I don't want to, you know, whack oh, on no, no, about yeah. stuff that, you know, people don't necessarily want to hear about in a yeah. video, which are just smaller details or topics that I feel that I could probably write better about yeah. I could talk about on a video. Yeah. So I absolutely. thought, bring the blog back. Uh, share some nice photos and yeah. it, I think it's going to be more of a topical vlog yeah. so it'll be you know talking about things like where the industry is going you know one of the topics that I'm interested in talking about right now is Nürburgring times like okay. do we need yeah, them yeah. you know do we need them? like that is in it itself the right is a, way to test the exactly car? yeah Stuff like so that, that in yeah. itself is the kind of thing that in a, a video could be like an hour long but in a, in a blog you can read it in you can read it, your own yeah, time you post, yeah. so yeah so I'm going back to that uh, but also the website as well will be launching us a store as well because okay, I get yeah. asked a lot for merch I never expected to really go down that route but coming but from a fashion background yeah. I thought why not so, but you probably also know the suppliers exactly you know the designers yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah, you're gonna you're gonna come stuff. in strong I can feel yeah it, yeah it'll be good and we're also you know teaming up with other existing fashion brands too. Oh, okay cool. so while it won't just be my own stuff we're gonna be able to bring my idea is that, you know, I want to be able to bring a product which would otherwise be quite expensive, um, do a collab with me, but bring it down to a price point which isn't crazy. Yeah, because also our demographic, yeah. 
by nature is is uh, not necessarily the oldest in the world. Exactly. Um, yeah, so yeah, they can't so. necessarily afford to spend, you know, 150 quid. That's right. Yeah. On yeah. A t-shirt. So I, I, well, I'm dealing with a brand now, which will be unveiled soon, where their T-shirts are literally like 120. Yeah. Euros. Yeah. yeah. I think that, even I think that's too much yeah, for a yeah, T-shirt. Yeah. Oh, uh, so I'm like, you know, it'd be great to bring this brand aesthetic, but put it into a price point, which is cool. Yeah. So uh, yeah, it'll be fun. More. It'll so be that's fun. very exciting. Yeah, man. And um, you're a big fan. I know this, and uh, we can't talk about this car when mentioning this. No. But I just want to hear your perspective on where the car industry is going, because I know you're a massive fan of the naturally aspirated. Yeah. And that's why you went back to the speciality. Exactly. And uh, I'm just always fascinated because you, obviously being a car fan and being a few years older than me, know your stuff really well and know a lot more about potentially where the car industry is going to go and stuff like that. So I want to hear your perspective on naturally aspirated turbo electric cars, what you feel about the car industry in the coming 20 years, let's say. Well, I mean, so just a small, we could, we could just a small on, question there. Yeah, right? we could ravel on. But this is ages. exactly what the blog's about, you know, because Perfect. of questions like that. But yeah. So yeah, big question. I'm going to start with extremes and go, you know, 20 years time, we're going to be sat probably in an electric car. Um, potentially being driven. Potentially being driven yeah, by a car. computer. Um, yeah. But being a driver, that kind of scares me a bit. Um, yeah. However, I look at this and I relate it to the equestrian scene, right? Okay. So if you look at, you know, horse riding culture right now, it's never been stronger. Okay. Yes, yet it has never been more on. Yeah, it's never been more niche. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. it's like yeah. you don't need to ride a horse in a field yeah. anymore. And I reckon supercars and sports cars are going to become a delicacy. They're going to become yeah. They're going to become for the purists. They're going to become for the people that are just passionate about you know riding horses, driving supercars. Yeah. Um, but I'm not going to go that far down the line yet. But I think that's where it'll be. I think if anything, the niche will still be huge. Yeah. You know, there'll still be a vast amount of of uh, petrol heads. You know, it's just be like, a vast amount of petrol cars. Absolutely. Oh, yeah, yeah, how many on the road? Yeah. yeah. Um, so I think, you know, like race horses now, they go for hundreds of thousands, if not millions. And I reckon supercars will do exactly the same. Yeah. Uh, and it will be for that sort of purest set who are, who are interested in that. Yeah. But going more towards the like short to midterm, um, one of my uh, feelings lately, particularly with turbocharged cars, has been how fast do you want to go? It is getting out the of hand. horsepower race. It's getting ob- obscene. I mean, you know, 570S is such a classic example of that. The 570 is McLaren's entry level supercar. It's marketed as a sports car. They don't even call they it, don't it a supercar. They don't call it a supercar. They call it a which sports is car. And it's like, it is 911 Turbo S fast, which well, is which is got... Porsche's top of the range. Oh, mate, That's their it's, supercar. It's crazy. It's got like 35 horsepower less than an Enzo. It's obscene. Which was a hypercar not long ago. Yeah, yeah, totally. It's getting out of hand. And I'm finding, so for those of you who might not know, I've been driving a 675LT for the last 12 months. Um, I've done just shy of 10,000 miles in that car. And sometimes I look down at the speedo in that and I'm like, how did I arrive at this? How did I arrive here? At this speed, you know? yeah. And I'm, I'm still trying to figure out if that's right or wrong, that I can yeah. arrive at speeds where I'm like 130, 140, 150 miles an hour. Yeah. With, when I say effortless, I mean, effortless. I haven't thought about it. I'll be having a chat like this, you know? And, and then it's, you just, just put your foot down and you're going And the fast. talk is savage. And I'm like, on the one hand, that's incredibly impressive. And it's, it's an amazing thing. On the other hand, my involvement and the theater and emotion of getting there was negligible. Now, don't get me wrong. Yeah. You can drop a load of cogs and you can make it a sense of occasion. Oh, yeah. and it can be oh, a, yeah. a massive deal. But I'm slowly getting back to the naturally aspirated experience. One, yeah. because they're slowly dying off. Yeah. But two, because they're giving me the theater and the emotional connection with the car that I'm finding turbo cars don't give unless you give it serious stick. Yeah. And if you, you give it serious stick, you're in the realms of, like oh my God, yeah. um, you know, I definitely should be doing this on Public the road. road. Yeah. Um, and I'm like, you know, how fast do you want to be going? Now, take the Speciali, which you mentioned I originally just got back into, yeah. and then take something like a 675L LT, yeah. um, 
you don't have to thrash that car anywhere near as much to get as much emotional connection yeah. Yeah, yeah, out yeah. of it. Yeah, you can be second gear in town and you can still have exactly, a Exactly, still having it. But I think you talking about cars going so quickly and then we're going to have to uh, ravel this up because yeah. it's going to get too, too long. I think what's happened also is cars have gotten so much quicker, so yeah. quickly, but we're still using the same roads we were using exactly. 30, 40 exactly years ago right. with the same speed limits. You know, traffic's getting worse. Stuff, yeah. um, and I just find worse, yeah. myself on the road these days, it doesn't matter if I'm in, you know, a sort of a 660 brake horsepower turbocharged supercar yeah. or a 300 horsepower naturally aspirated Porsche. Yeah. I'm, I'm not going any faster. Yeah. I'm not going to go any faster. Yeah. Not because I, I can't, it's just because it's just you've got to respect the rules of the road. And so I'm now finding, finding that if I'm reliant on, if, if my kicks are reliant on performance alone, yeah. it's yeah. going to go wrong. Yeah. And oh, that's absolutely. why I'm, at the minute, I'm chomping at the bit for naturally aspirated cars. Yeah. So, yeah. Also, just a quick one before we finish. Do you think that the rules of the road, as you were saying, could potentially be slightly outdated because now cars are so much more advanced. And for example, you know, speed limits were set depending on braking yeah. times and braking distances and stuff. Whereas now, like in something yeah. like this, yeah. I can brake from 100, which is a speed limit now, to zero in probably a quarter of what the yeah. original braking distance was calculated at. I mean, Do again, you think we should change this, update this? Or? I would hugely, again, this is why the blog is going to exist because yeah. there's, there's so many many sides to it I often find myself talking from a personal standpoint and case in point we are right now find ourselves in the latest greatest supercar yeah. carbon ceramic brake super lightweight carbon fiber tub really strong yeah. car but I think it's important to take into account the worst case scenario yeah and absolutely. someone could be driving a classic car still yeah and you know they might find themselves on a wet day yeah. in a classic car and the speed limit might have been it still applies. augmented to say, you know, okay, based on the average car, you can do 120 miles an hour now and all is cool. Yeah. And then Mr. Classic Car comes along, or it doesn't have to be a classic car, it could just be a, an old family car from the 80s. Yeah. You know, ABS is not on, or, or, or something like that. Yeah. Uh, which is when you get into this debate, well, what about the old age pensioner, uh, whose reaction times yeah. might not be, you know, as sharp. Yeah. Um, so yeah, th there's this this sort of wide, wide debate about, okay, cars are improving, uh, but the wider picture is there's still old cars on there, there's still old people about, yeah, you know, yeah, people yeah. who might not be as confident a driver as y you and I. Yeah. And ultimately, a car crash at 100 is worse than a car crash at 60. Exactly. Um, but yeah. don't get me wrong, like I, I still think there's room here. I think there's room here to be a little bit more flexible. Okay. Um, I mean, you know, take, you know, Germany, for example, has the, the autobahn and yeah. it generally works fine. Yeah. Uh, I'm yeah, not saying yeah. we should open it up across the world, but, but it can. It exactly. Can. Like, there's room where I'm, I'm more shocked that in England we have a country road, which is a single track lane. It almost should be one way and it's national speed limit. 60, I know, that's it's crazy really strange. in the UK. It's really strange. It's good fun though. I'm, I'm all about that. Yeah. I'm not saying change it, I'm just saying it's weird how But then you'll get on 70. the motorway, yeah, and then there are some zones which yeah. are 50 for oh, about yeah, it's weird. 30 it's really, minutes. It's really, really strange. Yeah. So, basically it's, it, it's wrong and it yeah. could be adjusted. Uh, and I do think there are scenarios where we could open it up to a wider speed limit. Yeah. And there's definitely areas where it should be the speed it is, so yeah. Okay. Looking at. Awesome. Well, James, thank you. Pleasure, thank man. you for coming on this. And uh, for we're going to keep going. We're going to drive this car, review this car. Good fun. Let's do it. Hopefully, we'll do another one of these soon. Thanks for watching, Thanks guys. For watching, guys. His links will be in the description down below. And I'll see you soon. Cheers. Bye -bye. Hey, yo. Quick cap saying it. Saturday in the mouth. No Juliet for no Romeo and no Doug.